So now that we've covered the basics of respiration and looked at how small aquatic organisms do respiration, let's get more advanced by now speaking generally about respiratory structures. These are going to be structures found in organisms that have a specialized circulatory and respiratory system. Therefore, they will utilize specialized structures known as respiratory structures. So we're going to see these respiratory structures, of course, in larger organisms. And these are going to be both land-dwelling and water-dwelling organisms. Larger organisms in this context, the idea of large will just mean greater than one millimeter thick. So that may not necessarily be the largest of organisms, but still larger than the less than one millimeter thick small aquatic organism counterparts. In these larger organisms, what's going to be a problem is the fact that diffusion itself, namely simple diffusion, the mechanism used by the smaller aquatic organism counterparts, that process in terms of respiration is just too slow. So we'll state that diffusion is too slow to meet this larger organism's gas exchange needs. To meet gas exchange needs. So that must mean that the larger organism needs to do something else. And the reason why this is too slow is because the organism is inherently too large. Because they're just too big. Diffusion is a slow process that takes time. And if the organism is large, it's going to take too long and it's going to be far too inefficient to rely on simple diffusion. What's going to work out better for these larger organisms, what they will utilize is a specialized circulatory and respiratory system. So they utilize a very specialized, very well differentiated and adapted circulatory system and respiratory system. We've seen the different complexities of circulatory systems. The same idea of complexity variation will be seen in different respiratory systems based off of the needs of the organism and the complexity. But generally speaking, respiratory structures will all have the following characteristics. And that's what makes them all going to fall under these types of uh, distinguishment, dis these types of overall descriptions, we should say. So in order to describe a respiratory structure, you need to understand that any respiratory structure that you're looking at, however advanced or simple, is going to be adapted for gas exchange. That's its number one job. To promote gas exchange, we're talking about organismic respiration. So we're going to adapt for gas exchange. That means it's going to specifically be between the organism and its environment. Um, and it's specifically also going to be through a different medium like air or water. So we're going to have organisms that either are terrestrial or aquatic. They live on land or live in water. They're going to need to do gas exchange through the air or through the water depending on where they are and they're going to utilize respiratory structures that are adapted for this process. These adaptations will involve several different structural features um, that are very important to understand to see just why respiratory structures work successfully. Structurally speaking, one of the things that makes respiratory structures so good at what they do is the fact that respiratory structures themselves, the things that will be involved in organismic respiration, have thin walls. So remember how small organisms, aquatic organisms, were thin. They were small because they were less than one millimeter thick. Now, even though these larger organisms are greater than one millimeter thick, their respiratory structures are, are the structures that will be specifically very, very thin because these structures, not the entire organism, but just the structures they have for respiration are going to allow for successful diffusion. Because remember, we have to utilize that law of diffusion in which higher partial pressure will move towards lower partial pressure. That's going to be the common denominator of all respiratory events. So in order to do that, you need respiratory structures that inherently have thin walls in their overall structural feature. Now, what we have to remember, again, is the fact that diffusion as a whole is a generally very slow process. So what we need to do is we need to have thin walls on these respiratory structures because we need to minimize, we need to minimize the transport of 
you need to minimize the transport slash exchange distance that in a specific gas may need to travel because this is a larger organism. There may be uh, a time where this gas has to travel from the top of the organism all the way to the bottom of the organism. So that's going to be a di large distance. And because diffusion is so slow, we can't rely on it exclusively. What we have to rely on are respiratory structures that are functioning well in this thin wall structural arrangement. In addition, these respiratory structures will generally present themselves with a very large surface area. Because a large surface area tells you that the rate of diffusion is actually directly proportional to the amount of surface area on the respiratory structure. So the rate of diffusion is proportional when you're talking about a respiratory structure to the surface area. A large surface area means a lots and lots of diffusion. Small surface area means very little diffusion. So that's that proportionality of surface area to overall gas exchange capability as a respiratory structure. A respiratory structure will also always present itself in a relatively moist uh, manner. The moistness is going to, it may be problematic, first of all, we want to get this out of the way, for organisms that live on land. This can be problematic for terrestrial organisms, therefore, but this won't be too much of a problem as we'll see how terrestrial organisms can combat this a little bit later. But for the most part, this moistness is there because gases themselves dissolve best. The gases themselves will diffuse best in an H2O medium. So they are going to do their job the best way that they can only if they are in contact with a water environment. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that the respiratory structures that are within the respiratory system of an organism that undergoes respiration has to have a moist overall environment so that the gases can dissolve successfully. And once the gas is dissolved successfully, you can then have successful transport and exchange of gases. What happens if you don't have a moist environment? If you don't have a moist environment, you can't diffuse the gases through dry structures. That's why we need to have a moist environment at the respiratory structures, and that's what we'll see when we talk about the actual function a little bit later. So we can't diffuse through dry respiratory structures. So what do we do? We make sure that these structures are always moist. Finally, last structural feature about respiratory structures in organisms that are larger. What we notice is that they have lots and lots of blood vessels near them. Why do they have lots of blood vessels near them? Well, that's because this is going to ensure that we increase and we make sure we have a high amount of exchange of material, specifically exchange of gases. Blood will carry gas that has carbon dioxide, let's say, in it, and then it will pick up gas, that a different gas, let's say, at the lungs, like oxygen, so that it can give oxygen to the rest of the body. Therefore, it makes sense that at the respiratory structure, you have tons and tons of exchange going on via these blood vessels. More on this specialization as we move forward. Finally, the last thing we want to mention about respiratory structures, and this is what we'll do going forward, is look at the four main types of respiratory structures. Initially, we'll look at how body surfaces themselves, just the surface of the body, like the skin, can act as a respiratory structure. We'll also look at how gills, which are good respiratory structures in water and aquatic environments, function. We'll look at the tracheal system and how it does a good job for insects in respiration, and then finally we'll conclude by looking at ourselves as highly developed mammalian organisms on land utilizing these very, very powerful, very efficient lungs. That covers our look at respiratory structures. Next up is to understand how body surfaces work.